Hello and welcome to the fifth in a set of tutorials for XFX Toolkit version 2, now with added object tracking. If you haven't got the plugin pack installed, please follow the link below. We'll move on to effects for picture moves and shrink backs. Now let's start off with the moves. All the moves and shrink backs can be found in the effects browser and they're all under 50s to make life easier. Now, what we'd normally do to show off 3D Perspective Pro, we would drag that onto a clip, but we've actually been watching this at the top of each tutorial and it's the effect that gives us this great animation in 3D of the GUI. What we do is we take a snap, um, a screenshot of the GUI and then animate it. And if you have a look, at the controls up here. They're fairly self-explanatory, but you can see we've got some keyframes animating between the two. We can adjust the scale. And here's the important one. This is really good because we're using the camera built in motion. We've got a rotation and that gives it the great rotation. And we get this lovely shallow depth of field look it really helps to emphasize things. This is really good for doing stills in documentaries and things like that. It makes them look absolutely gorgeous. Um, yeah, and of course we can vary the camera. So we've got, you know, we can move it, we can rotate it. This is good as well. They've got the angle of view so we can go from really wide angle down there. Always good to kind of, when you're playing around with the depth of field, I tend to push the depth of field right up and then give a waggle of the focus offset and then you'll see across the frame that the focus is changing just put that on where you where you want normally somewhere in the center but that gives a kind of like really good look to the to the GUI uh, maybe a bit too much depth of field there on the on the end and can pull that down and you've also got controls for near focus and far focus so that's the near focus plane and the far focus plane if you don't like the depth of field just click the infinite focus and then as you can see everything is in focus on there uh, what we've also got on here, we've got a, another effect on top of that. We've got the 3D Spotlight, which you might remember from a previous um, tutorial. And though, although we're not using the tracking facilities now in the in in the plugin, we've got that just to give everything a bit of modelling. And as you can see, you can get some really nice effects out of quite a dull screenshot on there. Um, and that's just with a couple of clicks and some keyframes in there really nice to do and really easy auto zoom and auto rotate are very similar and we are going to show you an example of both using this picture of the girl jumping now to start off with we need to get rid of these black edges that's quite simple all we need to do is just go in and scale the picture up and maybe bring her down a bit that should do right let's do auto zoom first and drop that on and what auto zoom does, it does a zoom into a specific point. So you can see the on-screen control, wherever we move that, if we put on a, on her face, it'll now zoom into her face. But maybe we want to zoom into, you know, into the middle. Really quick way of doing an animation on a photo. Uh, if you have a look at the controls in the inspector, uh, we have a beginning and end of the value. So this is going from zero magnification up to here. So we can actually say we want less magnification and that will give a slower move and end up with less magnification or less scale on the picture. The acceleration up to 100 will do a nice S curve, accelerating and decelerating. If you put it down to zero, it will just do um, a straight linear move. And then the start offset and end offset are from the front and the end of the clip. So if you want the move to happen and then stop, you just pump up the end offset and then that'll zoom in, slow down nicely and stop. OK, that's the auto zoom. Let's take that off and look at auto rotate. And that does a very, very similar thing. That's minus one and plus one degree. So we can actually back that off quite a bit to get a bigger rotation. Again, a great way of animating stills. You could combine the two together and have rotating and zooming image. Again, you can control the point of which it um, spins by using the on-screen control. And you've got the start and offset again so that you can actually have the thing rotate and then stop before the end of the clip if I pump that up. There you go. Let me slightly worried for a minute there. So that's two plugins that make animating 
images or indeed video really easy no keyframing and you can adjust them bear in mind if you uh, bring the clip down in length then the animation is going to happen the same but over the, the a quicker time because this effect is going to last the length of the clip so if you've got a series of zooms and your director says, well, I love them all, but I want them to be a second less, you can make them all a second less and the animation will still be there. It'll still do the full animation and you won't have to move any keyframes. Let's skip over to picture push up and drop that on the helicopter shot. And you'll see what happens. It does a picture push up by anchoring the top of the frame, but moving the bottom up. And of course, as you'd expect, you can adjust the amount that the picture goes up by by this Y shrink control in the inspector. Lots of controls, build in and build out, will do the animation or not do the animation, so you can butt clips up to each other without having them open every time. Um, also the acceleration, 100 will give you a nice S curve, zero is just a straight linear move, and you can of course adjust the speed of the movement. This drop shadow is the drop shadow underneath the picture frame, and that gives it just a bit more depth to there rather than just being on that background um, but that background you've got a variety of choices you can got a, got a gradient here which you can say oh I have a you know horrible yellow maybe maybe not or you can have a solid color uh, just increase the opacity of that that might actually match a corporate color or something like that and of course you can put whatever text you like if I can spell it right into that area I can control whatever font I want to use on there the size the alignment etc and you can actually go for more than one line and have line spacing so that's a really great way of showing information off on there things like websites social media handles prices telephone numbers all great to get the information on without actually going over the video Let's go back one just to the mask box picture in picture and drop that onto our shot. And straight away, you can see we have a picture in picture effect over uh, these kite borders. We've got some on screen controls. We can drag this picture around where we like. And it's got some controls for the picture in the picture. And you don't have to do any fussy masking or anything. It's really easy to do. I can move this around in X and Y. I can control the size and with a little handle as well, I can actually control the orientation or the rotation of that. These controls are reflected in the inspector. As you can see, that's the scale and the position. I can also adjust the outline, the color of the outline. Let's say, let's make that blue. Not too sure I like that, but it shows, um, but it shows the plugin off. Not wild about that colour, but what I'll do is I'll fiddle with the drop shadow as well. I can turn that off and on, position the drop shadow, um, put a bit more blur on it maybe, but that makes that but as always that helps it stand out from the from the background. A really quick way of doing a picture in picture on Final Cut Pro 10 and very flexible too. On to one of my favourite sets of plugins, the shrink backs, and we'll start off with 56, the plain shrink back, although plain is probably not the word for it. Let me drop it on this clip. And to start off with, it looks fairly boring and it just look as if it looks as if it's doing a zoom. But if you look in the inspector, what it does, it, it does a move and a crop from one state to another. So a bit hard to describe a lot easier to show. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, right, I want to start off on the full frame. That's fine. But let's say I want to go the end scale. I want, I want it still to be the same, but I want to highlight this Thai food sign. So what I can do is I can crop in to this right and left and then top and bottom. And if this is all worked out correctly, when I play, It'll crop. So that's moving the, the crop. OK, well, if that's fair enough. But what I can also do is I can actually move the position. So you could say, right, well, let's put that in the middle for a bit of emphasis. And there we go. And it should go back to where it was using the build in the build out. As always, if you don't want the animation, just turn those off and everything should work um, just as um, a straight move without the move, if you know what I mean. 
really kind of like you can do a lot with this plugin and it's the basis for the other two as well but that really shows the thing off again the acceleration 100 on there is going to be a nice s curve and zero is going to be linear you can adjust the speed um, but there's lots of ways you can do this for highlighting things highlighting a bit of text maybe or something like that very very flexible and the next plugins hopefully will show that off even more so instead of having one picture shrink back, how about two bits of video shrinking back to go side by side? If I drop that effect onto the clip that we saw before, you'll see that the Thai food stall shrinks back to the left and underneath we have another clip, but we've actually got that set to shrink back right. If we look at the other clip, the Thai one, that's set to shrink back left. You've got a choice between the two. So a very easy way to get two images on screen at the same time. If you're doing a Skype call or something like that, or an interview or a two way, um, you can do that. It's just a couple of clicks to get it. You don't have to reposition everything all the time. Um, again, you've got build in and build out, as you'd expect, um, with speed and the acceleration. As you can see on the front here, the bottom picture is is zooming underneath it now you might want that effect I actually want to go to the static so by toggling off the build in when I play this now the picture is already there and that looks a bit better to me and what I could do is I could actually put another background underneath for those two pictures to to go back on a very quick way to get two bits of video side by side on the Final Cut Pro 10 timeline on to shrink back quad and I bet you can guess what's going to happen especially when you see that I've got four clips on my timeline let me drop shrink back quad onto the top and as you can see it's another shrink back and it goes back to a quad split what we have in the inspector is very similar to what we had before so we've got a build in and build out and the positions we can choose so that at the moment is going to the top left you can say top right bottom right bottom left but we want it in the top left on there again the other video clips actually have the build in and build out toggled off so when we get this video shrinking back to the top left quadrant the other pictures or video are already there at the same time and that goes back up now if you want to bring one of the other images up that's really easy to do just blade the clips and then you'll have to toggle off the original build out and then put the build out on the clip you want to come out to full frame but that clip will have to be rearranged so it's actually on the top of the stack after the cut really easy and quick to do to build up a quad split so that's it for moves and picture shrink backs we really like the shrink backs and think they could have been a plug-in on their own and maybe they will be one day with a few more options um, we're going to come back on the next tutorial and we're going to show um, adding gloss to graphics and also some shades which really help to make graphics stand out